Welcome back to the Dairy Raid, and they say if I put my dumb face in these videos, it will improve engagement and improve my views, so why not? We're going to give this a shot. So today, we are going to be talking about spring football and the storylines that we're going to be looking into the spring from a coach's point of view. You know, there are obvious spring storylines that everyone's been talking about so far and they are very much big picture seeing it from the fans point of view storylines and they're very valid and we're gonna we're gonna touch on them here as well but for me when I'm looking at the spring is I want to see changes in how Wisconsin football conducts business how they are changing the use of their roster, how they are maybe expanding playbook, etc. So we're going to look into a few points here talking about uh, just that. So starting off, number one is the expanded use of personnel packages. Uh, I touched a little bit about this on, on Twitter the other day. And this is both offensively and defensively. Um, obviously, last year offensively, we spent a lot of time in the 11 personnel, uh, one running back, one tight end, three receivers. Uh, we're one of the le nation's leaders in that uh, personnel package. And based on the strength of the, of the personnel we had on offense last year, that was th the best. Uh, going into this season, though, and we saw it starting in the bowl game, that personnel package while it might give us our best 11 on the field most of the time there's going to be situations where we can switch it up a little bit more and get a little bit more out of the offense uh, we saw it in the bowl game when Tretch came in and they went 10 personnel four receivers um, with the emergence of a guy like Tretch He's the type of player who's not just going to be Will Pauling's backup. Because Will Pauling ain't leaving in the field unless he gets injured. So we're going to need a solid second slot that we can use on the field at the same time as Pauling. And, and Tretch is that guy. And I think there are other guys uh, emerging on the roster that could be that as well. Uh, the tight end room. Right now, the tight end room is is in flux because while we lose the leader of the room, we don't lose a lot of production when Hayden Rucci graduated. So there's a lot of talent in the tight end room, but there's a lot of inexperience. However, if you look at the type of tight ends that are in there now, there are a lot of different body types and there are a lot of different uses of those body types beyond the traditional tight end role. So you have the big slot guys like uh, Ashcraft or a guy who can maybe split out as an X receiver like a Rob Book, uh, Booker. Jackson McGone is another big slot. Grand Steck is maybe that more traditional tight end with upper end ball skills. Uh, and then you have your, your fullback types like... Uh, Riley Nokowski. And so there are a lot of different types of tight ends. So that's another position where we could see a lot more versatility. And with the versatility with the different type, type of players we have, you can see them used in different roles and that it changes the personnel packages. Last year we saw 11 personnel, 12 personnel, 13 personnel, and we could see a lot more use out of, out of that. Again, not because I don't know if necessarily our best 11 is going to be in 11 personal all the time. Uh, talking even more on the receivers, I, I'm excited about this year's crop of receivers. I think we have some athletes. I think we have a lot of guys who took some time to get used to their role. And now with a full season in the program, we could see more. And you know, even without dipping too much into the transfer portal. I like a lot of the guys we have. So we could see different groupings of those players. Maybe this maybe in the same personnel packages 
you know, maybe it's in the in the 10, 11, but you could see different groupings of those players to get more involved because we have talent. It's just unproven. And then finally, with the running back room, the running back room is a big question mark. Um, and with the way modern football is going, you don't have to have a number one back. You can have a 1A and then two 1Bs and a 1C, whatever. And again, it's a running back room with a lot of different body types and a lot of different uh, skill sets that can be used in combination with each other or in combination with the position or the personnel groups and the other positions. So there's a lot of versatility left in the offense that could make us, you know, keep the offense as simple. You know, Phil Longo wants to run 26 plays, but he can run 26 plays out of a bunch of different formations with a bunch of different personnel groups. And that will make the offense seem more dynamic without muddying up the system with extra plays, etc. Uh, and that's what you want in an offense. You want an offense that is multiplicative and not an offense that is additive. Um, and then uh, beyond the offense, and I know we usually just talk about offense on this channel, the defense. You know, last year, as much as we were this vaunted 3-3 defense, most of the year we were in the 2-4. And when we were in uh, pro-style sets, we were in the 3-4. Because that that was the defense that best fit the personnel we had. We also ran some some dime or some uh, dollar, excuse me, and some various three three packages. But for the most part, we were a th uh, two four three four defense. Um, that was more out of necessity, I think, because as we see, we didn't have the athletes to do much else. Uh, and as we're seeing now that we're getting into the off season really how unathletic our, our front was and how our how the idea of addition by subtraction is going to help the defense improve this year. But then on top of that, we've added five new linebackers. Five new linebackers with different body types and skill sets. And when you add that diversity, uh, I can see situations where four of those guys are on the field at the same time. And I can see situations where different groupings of three and four, depending on the formation. And you can run various fronts. You can run the traditional 3-3 three, three stack. You can run the 3-3 three, three over front where the Sam linebacker is, is up on the line on the strong side, more of a run stopper. You can run a 3-3 three, three under front where the outside linebacker is up on the line as an edge rusher on the weak side, and then you have a five-tech defensive end on the strong side. Uh, various different looks that you can get with the linebacker group. And again, there are going to be guys that I think are going to be in every package. Jaheim Thomas, uh, Taka Curtis, and I think Jake Chaney are going to be the three that we're going to see the most in the two inside linebacker spots. Uh, but John Pius is a different linebacker than Leon Lowry. Uh, Sebastian Cheeks, I think, is going to get some playing time. Uh, so you're going to see different groupings of those. And I like that. I like the, the idea that the defense is going to be able to get be more situational and move people around. And that's going to help create the pressure that the defense sorely needs. Uh, we didn't get much pressure last year. One, because... Our defensive line was not recruited for that purpose. And I think that's a very important thing that people always talk about, the, the failings of the defensive line. Our defensive line is essentially block stoppers. That's what a three-down line defensive line is supposed to do. We have a bunch of defensive tackles and nose tackles. We have no five techs on the roster other than guys maybe coming in. We have no five-tech edge rusher defensive lineman because we didn't have anybody recruited to do so. That wasn't what the defense was. And the problem was is we didn't have those athletes in the linebacking core either. Now we do. We've added true athletes to the linebacker core. We've added some athletes to the D-line core. And that's going to change how the defense is run and how we can use personnel packages 
to expand upon that, which leads me into my second point here, uh, which is more movement. And again, this is for both offensively and defensively. Uh, offensively, we've added a lot more speed. We used a lot of, of shifts and motions last year um, as a base coverage indicator and just as, you know, a pacing thing where we come out in formation, look at the defense, we get the personnel package we want, we adjust the formation, et cetera. What I'd like to see more this year, and I think we will see more, is the use of movement to facilitate the play. So we're going to see shifts into motions and those shifts and motions building into the, into the play that we're going to be seeing. I think we're going to see more of that. Uh, I think we're going to see true movement a lot more, and I, I'd like to see how that's implemented this spring. We're obviously not going to get a full package, but you're definitely going to be able to get uh, a little bit of insight of what they're looking for. Um, defensively, more movement is going to be important because that's how you create pressure in a off-the-ball pressure-built defense. It's trying to get situations where we can overwhelm at the point of attack instead of just relying on quick, short movements, uh, slant stunts, and blitzes to create that pressure. So the pressure is going to come from not only that, I mean, but we're going to build upon that by trying to get three blockers or three defenders going in the area of one of uh, two blockers, layering blitzes where two players are going through the same hole at different levels. Uh, Simulated pressures, etc. Uh, these are defensive philosophies that Dave Aranda really expanded on, and he's known for. And if you look at his defenses at Baylor, his defense at Baylor looks a lot more like what Luke Fickle is doing. And that's not a coincidence, because I know they've studied him. And I think they're going to build upon that, because obviously I think the Big 12 is a better analog of what is happening in the Big Ten than the American was, obviously. And so I think we're going to see a little bit more of that pressure style brought in to the defense we have now. With Again, we're expanding off of the personnel we have, and we're expanding off of what we built upon last year. The defense got progressively better as the season went on. As I started to understand the philosophy, as they started to understand the importance of athleticism and movement, the defense got better. Now we want to put the defense in a position of not thinking, but reacting and attacking. We didn't do that last year. Uh, next point, updated fundamentals. What I mean by that is, uh, especially in the quarterback room, uh, we saw a lot of, you could tell, again, we had three transfer quarterbacks. And, the three transfer quarterbacks were using a lot of them were using footwork and technique that you could tell they learned from their previous stops. I think that was done on a necessity. Um, I think Phil Longo had been, has been building that up throughout the season. And we saw with Tanner Mordecai, when we got in the bowl game, he looked a lot more like a Phil Longo quarterback in terms of his footwork in the bowl game than he did in week one. And I think that's something that we are going to see more of this year. I think we're going to go into the spring and you're going to see Tyler Van Dyke running Phil Longo footwork from day one because I think that was part of the issue of the timing is the plays are, are built upon Phil Longo's drop back footwork. And when you're not doing it, you're either too fast or too slow. It's hard to change what you're used to timing wise if you're doing what you've done in the past, but it's not what is designed for what you're using now, if that makes any sense. So I think you're gonna see, we're going to see them being a lot more of a stickler for the fundamentals, offensively especially. I think there's been a lot of work done with timing and understanding the leverage of the receivers. Uh, the important, The big thing with young players who maybe didn't get as much playing time last year, is all they do is drill. So they've been working on this technique, and I think you're going to see guys like Vinny Anthony and Quincy Burroughs really step forward this year because they spent their whole season last year 
for the most part, trying to press, press the coaches with fundamentals and footwork and technique. And you saw their their roles expand as the season went on, as people left the roster. And again, it's addition by subtraction, right? Defensively, we're going to see a big change with this. Again, we, we, we heard about this going into the spring last year. And the first time we were talking to coaches, the idea of marrying the, the Luke Fickle playbook with the Wisconsin ideals, making it a best of both worlds kind of situation. And that really didn't work because there was a clash of, tech, of, of styles. And the unathletic nature of the previous defenses. And they work fantastically. And they work with the type of guys we got. Uh, so there's no knocking on on Dave Aranda and Justin Wilcox and Jim Leonard. But now that they've had a year to give everybody their trial period, so to speak, they had a year to learn the system. They had a year to learn everything. This spring, it's going to be you do it the way we're supposed to be doing it or you're not going to get playing time. And there's a reason why they brought in all those uh, transfers defensively because I think there's a lot of holes on the roster defensively. So you're going to see guys with new footwork, new ways of attacking the football, more coming downhill uh, with speed and working laterally with speed um, instead of this kind of pussyfooting, slow check down, waiting for the ball kind of situation like we saw last year. So... That's important. Four, uh, the use of young players. College football has changed. It is changing. And gone are the days of having a guy sit on the bench for three years and becoming a starter as a redshirt junior. Um, the kids who were recruited last year and the kids who were recruited this year uh, especially the ones who are in uh, enrolled early, and that's why there's a lot enrolled early now, is because they want to play now. And if they don't play now, what you're going to end up having is they're going to transfer. So you're going to see personnel packages. You're going to see groupings of young guys trying to get them on the field early, but then you're also going to see them pushing young guys to get significant playing time because we we can't wait anymore for players to develop the de players have to develop on the run and that is going to be a different philosophy so we're going to probably see a lot of maybe Matt Toyer we're going to see getting into Tuca we are going to see Ernest Willard we're going to see these guys playing early because two things are going to happen they're either going to show that they are ready to go now and they are pushing for playing time or they are going to be able to prove to themselves that they are not ready and they need time to develop. Those are the two types of players you want. You don't want a young guy who shows ability, but you make him sit on the bench to develop. You want a young player who has ability and you find a way to use them. And we saw that last year. A couple of true freshmen got significant playing time. Uh, or you get the guys who prove that they are not ready physically, mentally, and they need time to develop, whether they like it or not. Uh, and we have examples of that as well. So this spring and going into the fall, I think we're going to hear a lot of young names. And I'm curious to see that because the kids are Fickle's kids, Longo's kids, Trestle's kids, guys that were recruited specifically to run what we're running. And they are going to push the guys who were specifically recruited for something else and spent four years doing it. And now they're going to be asked to do something different. And they've had a year to put themselves in position to do so. So then number five, well, it's the obvious. And I, I, I left this to the end because way smarter people than me have spent the time talking about these, these points, but I'll, I'll review them here real quick. Obviously, TVD and his impact on the offense. How comfortable does he look? Does he have rapport with his receivers? Uh, offensive line play. 
Can Jake Renfro stay healthy? Who's going to replace uh, Fertney at guard? Who's going to re who is going to emerge as the swing tackle? Who's you know how is the how is the rotation going to be looking? Uh, receivers. We didn't. We only got one guy in the portal. He's a, he's a slot where the re wide receiver room where the wide receiver is going. Okay. Bryson Green going to take a step forward. C.J. Williams going to take a step forward. Um, tight ends. We have no experience. Who's going to emerge? Defensively. Defensive line play. Defensive line play. Defensive line play in every way, shape, and form. Are we getting pressure? Where's Jamel Howard? Is Ernest Willer getting playing time? What kind of groupings are we using? Linebackers. Are any of the returning linebackers going to get into the rotation or are we going to see a mass exodus of reserve linebackers at the end of the spring defensive back the young guys are we going to see Braden Moore are we going to see Amari Snowden are we going to see changes to that group is Hunter Wohler going to be more of a free safety than a, than a dollar this year those are obvious things and a lot of it has to do with people and because in spring obviously we're not going to see anything in terms of time management and substitution packages and special teams and all these kind of things. It's going to be more, you know, basic, but it's about, the, it's all about the players. So a lot of things to think about in the spring. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, this channel started last year with a breakdown of the launch, and I'm looking forward to assuming that the launch is going to be broadcast again this year, that um, I have some film to break down. We can kind of go through it, but we'll come back here after the spring and we'll review these points and see if, uh, if we hit on them and what other storylines emerged in the spring. So that'll be then. So until then, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.